what's up guys and today's tutorial guide i'll be showing you six mistakes smartphone graphic designer makes especially pixel lab design makes on their design software that does not make their work professional so without spending much of your time let's get right into these mistakes and how you can fix them even on your pixel lab uh, the first mistake most pixel lab designer does is that we don't use their design principles uh, one of the things I want you to know about design principles are design principles are not meant for only let's say PC designer they are not meant for those who are into you know like they use PC for their design software uh, design principle is meant well for every graphic designer irrespective of what software or design tool you use and, and there are a lot of design principles that you as a graphic designer that see yourself as a graphic designer that you must obey starting from alignment balance contrast hierarchy i layout and all that stuff like that so in the next another video tutorial guide right on this channel i'll make a video that will be explaining all these principles of design have designed for you and how you can begin to use them on your design principles of designs are not meant for only pc designer they are meant for every graphic designer and they are meant and do their what you should begin to use as a graphic designer so now let's get into the practical aspect and the number two mistakes are uh, graphic design a smartphone graphic designer it makes a special pc lab design it was not using their grid lines on their design software which is pixel lab okay so let me just show you an example for example if you want to activate your grid line you want to activate your grid right on pixel lab you need to go over to the top part of what of this your uh the uh, pixel lab which is this square stuff so when you activate it you have it comes with this three by three um dimension words of uh, of grids and one of the things i want you to know that grids are not just meant to uh to put square on your design no they are more than that virtually every every software for designs comes with a grid line if they mean they may not come with any other thing similar but every smartphone every software of graphic designer that i've ever seen comes with a grid line and um so grid lines help you to, to make uh, alignment possible uh, in your design remember i said earlier that principle of design are meant for graphic designer and one of the ways wherein you can achieve alignment in your design was is through the use of grid lines and how do you use it to write your picture lab just go when you have activated it on this top right of the screen just go back to this side to resize so if you want to resize you want to make a magnet of this okay let me start with this right hand side this circular stuff help you to uh, choose the amount of grids you want to appear on your design for example on the original part of the grid i want to have like five grids and let's say on the lower part i want to have like seven grids so depending on what you are working with grids will help you what achieve alignment right here what on pixel lab so i also have an extensive video on grids that will help you uh, to uh, grow your grid grid, uh, grid knowledge i'll put the link in the description for you what to also watch it so now moving on to the third uh, mistake of uh, uh, graphic designer especially this lab designer make words is dragging images and shapes for example let me bring in uh, a an image and let me show you the example of what i'm talking about most uh, graphic designer always do this mistake and anytime you look at a design it always make their uh, design unprofessional so let me just okay let me bring in an image over here and use this for what an example okay i have this png image over right here so what most some designers always do especially pc lab designer always do today is that instead of them doing this do this to their image they won't do that this is what they will do they begin to to drag to drag like image can you see the difference between what you do imported and let me just let me take for example let me undo this and let me copy it let me copy it okay i have this over here i have this over here and look at this one what they will do is that they will begin to drag image like this and stuff like this does not make you a professional image make sure you use every image as it will as it is given to you make sure you use it as it is given to you don't drag them on the right or the lower part no if you want to make it bigger or taller the only option you have is was is to use this uh this dots at the uh, this right uh, uh side 
you so used to increase it at once don't you ever do this or do this what to your image now moving on to the uh, fourth sticks and the solution to it is what what some uh, designer also do is that uh if they bring in the shapes if they bring in a shape for example this like this if they bring in a shape uh and they are done like using it on activating it when they click ok let's say they want to increase it if they want to increase it again another mistake they do is that they will begin to what, drag it okay let me go back here so that i will show you a more example like they will begin to do, let's let's have something like this if they have something like this and they want to increase it another mistake they do is that they will just uh when they have unactivated they will begin to what, drag it like this and can you see let me show you something let me show you can you see these angles can you see how blurry this look can you see how blurry it look? if you do it like that instead of doing that let me show you what you should begin what to begin to do not to avoid that when you activate it on these shapes leave it on these shapes do whatever you want to do right what when you are activating it on the shapes if you want to increase this increase this if you want to reduce this, reduce it like this and with this was you still have was your shapes intact and even best best still if you want to make this just copy this and uh and copy this let me show you the difference if you copy it this was the copied one can you see the uh angles can you see how uh, sharp the angles and look at this second angles can you see how blurry this looks so anytime you're done with something like that just make sure you copy and delete the original one and when you delete the original one uh you have your proper shapes on it and moving on to another mistake and the solution to it is that what most graphic designer does is that uh um they just match elements together they match elements and which distorts their work for example let me show you an example of something like this elements of designs let's for example you have like two shapes you have like two shapes over here and you want to match them let me show you a mistake they do that okay and they copy it again and um they have or oh, let's say something like this and one of the mistakes most than i do and how you can avoid is that let's for example you have something like this let's say for example you have something like this let me match them normally let me match them normally if you match them like this uh there's some something has been done to the image for example look at it the angles or the shapes the angles what has been distorted they are now blurry and if you work with this it will make you make your work look unprofessional so one of the ways you can avoid this every time you match shapes every time you match elements together is what make sure you click on it when you match them together copy it and delete the original one when you copy it and delete this was the copied one can you see how sharp are the edges are now because what you copied and um like it makes uh it uh helps your work work better so and best as to let's say for example you have two elements like this instead of imagining them in case you want to make correction next time just click on the two or made it to two image instead of imagining them move them together move them together just like what you can see me do right here or for example okay just like instead of margin just click on them try to make whatever thing you want to do if it's wondering increase it increase it right from here if you want to move it move it even right from here or what anything you want to do so that is best another and the solution to it and um finally for today finally for today i want to show you the last trick you can begin to use in importing your design right here on pixel lab the last trick what you need to use was in importing your design uh on pixel lab i know what many people will do what most designer will do is that anytime they are done working on any project okay let me just go over here let me just go over to one of my projects that i have over here to give you an example okay let me go over to this uh to this work over here so this is my finished work what most pixel lab designer will do is that anytime they want to save they'll just go over save as image uh you know just you save this to ultra what and save i'll show you an example and i'll show you the proof that how you begin to save your image so this was this is a normal way of saving design for most pixel lab designer but now i'll be showing you another trick you can begin to use in saving your design in greater quality in greater quality so when you have your design done you are done with saving it and you are done with everything you want to do if you want to save you want to save it to your gallery so the next this trick or uh, is a trick i discovered so just go over to like instead of leaving it as jpeg uh, no transparency go over to it and uh, and was click on png and was over to this place go click very high 
just save it as very high or you can use it as custom but i'll say you to go for very high or ultra but make sure it's on png very high or you get, leave it as custom then what save to gallery and i will go over to my uh, file manager and show you the difference between of what we just did now so after this is done saving let me go back let me go back to here so let me go back to gallery to show you the proof okay i have this over here I have this over here. Let me go over to file. So we show you the proper uh, stuff we just did here. So I'll go over to image and um, I'll show you. Um, okay, let me go back again. Let me go back again. So this is lab over up here. And I'll just wait for a few minutes, a uh, few seconds actually. And um, okay. Okay, I just show you the proof. This is the first one we saved. This is the first one we saved. And I want to show you something. Can you see how um, blur or what should I say blurry? And um. And most importantly, look at the uh, size. Look at the uh, size. Look at the MB size between the look at the difference between the first and the second one. This was the one we saved generally as ultra. And look at the second one we saved uh, as a normal uh, stuff that I show you the trick. And look at these uh, images over here. Of, uh, so this was the one I saved using just a normal saving version. And look at the MB over here. The MB says 2.92. And when I use this trick, when I use this trick of saving it PNG and using very high, uh, it's gives me what it moves from 2.92 watt to 4.71 mb so this is the end of today's video tutorial guide and um i believe you've learned something valuable as a pc lab designer or as a graphic designer so i will make sure you like make sure you begin to use this in your next project and as you begin to make your work professional so we find this video helpful so make sure you like this video subscribe to this channel and share this video to even other creative pixel lab designers for them to also grow Thank you for watching.